Right, thank, thank you very much, Paul. Good afternoon, everybody, to Brands Hatch. Um, I think people know that we've been working hard on an evolution of the BSB regulations over the past six months, and now's the time when we're actually making the announcement as to the content of that and the shape of BSB 2012. I think people appreciate, too, that since MSV took over, or MSVR took over British Superbikes, um, how many years ago? For, uh, 2008. 2008. We've, we've really enjoyed being proactive with the evolution of it and taking a strong product to ever increasing uh, levels of appeal for competitors and particularly fans of course. And uh, we've achieved that by really trying to understand what makes things work, what's good and what's not good and being prepared to um, evolve the championship, evolve the format, introduce new ideas. I think that's an important concept. You know, we, we're, we're a very nimble um, team, really. Uh, BSB now is, is, is headed by Stuart Higgs, as you all know, as a series director. Um, and, and Stuart bouncing ideas off me. We, it's really just the two of us who come up with the ideas in consultation, though, and this is a critical element, in consultation with everybody else who's involved. Uh, particularly the teams, the manufacturers, the riders, um, the fans, the media. And, uh, it's very, very important. That's our role, really, is to make decisions based upon having ideas and just and just gathering information and feelings from people who, who've got a who've got an interest in the sport um, and have got valid views. In the past, we've introduced things like the single make tire with uh, with Pirelli, which has been a great success. That certainly closed up the racing. A year ago, we introduced the concept of the showdown to ensure that the championship went right to the wire, and that worked perfectly last year with six riders fighting for the for the championship at the very last event at Alton Park. Uh, these sort of things are quite brave things to do, and inevitably there'll be people who who don't like change. Sometimes change can be bad, but if, if it's thought through well um, and and executed well, we can have a, a mechanism of taking BSB as said to 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 increasing heights, and the showdown was a good example um, by, I, by taking the top six to go through after Cadwell Park we really did bring the championship to, to a, an incredible climax and uh, already there's chat about for example from the results today influencing who's going to make the showdown who's going to make that critical top six we introduced a single bike rule as well to help reduce costs and um, we introduced the Evo class um, a couple of years ago to give an opportunity for us to, to pilot a lower cost concept of British Superbikes uh, by using broadly standard bikes, by using a spec ECU to see how it worked. And that's been a very valuable exercise. For 2012, we've been acutely aware of the fact that, uh, that budgets are still hard to find from teams. The economy clearly went into a big recession in 2009. 2010 was better this year, maybe a bit better. Um, but the general view, and my view as a businessman, was that we were going to be in a difficult economic climate for several years. That 2012 wasn't going to be a year of back to boom times of 2007 and 2008. And we felt that from the beginning of the year. And we were working on, a, on, on an evolution of BSB to make it healthier and bigger and better still, taking into account um, still a challenging global economic climate. And indeed, I think you know, it, it's interesting that the, the news from the last few days has merely endorsed that. The fact that we are not, um, as an economy, whether it's, na na whether it's national, European or global, we're not out of the woods yet. And therefore, if we want to really make things healthy, um, it's been really important to keep the cost well under control. The teams have been eager to do that. Any teams have different vested interests depending on what they've invented in, in, on, in what they've invested in. Um, but we wanted to make 2012, um, I say, the, the, the biggest year yet for, 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 for BSB. What we've done for the regulator, well, the other thing that's important actually, some background, is that we wanted to go back to just having one set of technical regulations for the whole field. And we feel that with the regulations we've now put in place that have been approved by MCRCP, we're going to be doing that. So there will no longer be um, a top class and an Evo class. There will be just one, one uh, series, which means that everybody could be fighting for the same thing. It's easier to understand for competitors. It's easier to understand particularly for the fans, the TV viewers. Um, and now, having done our homework and done the pilot scheme, is the right time to do it. So the regulations for next year are really going to come be, are, are focused on the very successful Evo concept that we've had. And that is bringing back um, the, the engine and powertrains, the engine and gearboxes particularly, to be as close to standard as possible. Unlike cars, bikes, super bikes particularly, sports bikes, 1000cc sports bikes, are incredibly sophisticated bits of kit. 
the level of performance, the specific performance of engines um, is, is fantastic and gets better and better each year. And bikes are clearly not constrained by the same sort of things that, that, that are in cars. So the standard bike is already extremely effective. We've seen that the Evo class, um, and indeed with um, Greg Gowland today, you can just see how competitive a bike, ha a bike can be, and we've seen it at all parts in it here again today, um, that by having um, a superbike chassis with a standard engine and gearbox, or pretty standard engine and gearbox and spec ECU, it was really not taking significant chunks away from performance. What we wanted to do, on the other hand, is to enable, uh, or uh, we are mindful of the fact that one of the problems with having a completely Evo spec regulation for BSB is that it doesn't take into account the fact that manufacturers have life cycles of their sports bike. Not everybody brings out a new sports bike every year. In fact, nobody does. Um, they run for two, three, four years, maybe five years, and particularly again with the climate, manufacturers are intending to extend the life cycle of their sports bikes, not decrease it. On the other hand, it's really important that each year we don't just have the best standard bike winning or the best one or two standard bikes winning. So we wanted to embrace um, regulations that had scope for sufficient tuning for the bikes that were a little bit older to still be race winning competitive. And so the challenge that we set was how we can, how we can um, achieve this with the minimum cost to the teams. And this, this cost entertainment balance is absolutely critical to the sport. That is the nub of the business, really. In BSB, um, the aim is to, to provide the teams with the opportunity of being competitive with the lowest, relatively the lowest budgets. Um, it's never going to be cheap at a BSB level, but it certainly doesn't need to be as expensive as it has been in the past and the sort of um, scope that one gets with World Superbike regulations. On the other hand, so it's driving down the cost of participation. On the other hand, we want to drive up the value of the entertainment because ultimately what pays for all this is the fans attending racetracks and the TV viewers the eyeballs and watching the bikes go round with the brands of the bikes and the brands of the sponsors on and the further we can push the, the, the quality of the entertainment, the value of the entertainment upwards and push the cost of putting on the show down, we've got an increasingly viable business. So that's, that's been our motivation. And it's exactly the same, whatever, whatever you're doing, whether you're making a car, or selling a car, or a hotel room, an airline, you're just trying to drive down the cost of, of putting on the, uh, the service or the product and drive up the value of that service or product. So next year is going to be one regulation it's going to be superbike chassis first of all let's talk about the easy bit the chassis are going to remain the same we know that the fans love to see trick bits on chassis they're an important part of them you can see them um, and it really sets the standard visually that we don't want to change and performance wise too what's going to change is that the world superbike spec engines will no longer be permitted and engine regulations will be as Evo is now, but with some important, um, some important changes to enable a degree of tuning to enable, say, hopefully, all bikes to become pretty competitive. Essentially, there's a document that sets out, quite a big document, what these, what these regulations are and the scope of tuning, but essentially it is variation in camshaft. Camshaft lift and uh, duration are free now, um, as we say, not in, uh, in Evo. And you can, also, you can also machine, you can add metal, and you can machine the porting as well. Those are the two key areas that uh, can be changed. And the, 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 the head can be skimmed as well to vary the compression ratio. What's also possible, for, apart from a standard regulation, is that you can use aftermarket con rods, providing they're no lighter than the current, uh, than, 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 than the standard component. The reason being to provide the opportunity for a more reliable con rod, if indeed a team thinks that's appropriate. Some of, across all the manufacturers, there are those that think it's not necessary and that's fine. There are those that have some concerns um, and they're not necessarily more expensive, so we've given freedom for that to happen too. Otherwise, the engine regulations are, are as evo. That's going to bring the cost down of engines really quite substantially. And yet the power output is probably going to be down I don't know, 10, 15 horsepower, something like that. It's not going to be discernible out on the track. The other big change that we're introducing, which relates to the engine, is the engine management systems. I think most people are aware that um, electronics um, are pretty much taking over the world. The scope of electronics engine management systems um, in contributing to the performance of a bike uh, or any other machine has been, it, it's great and is escalating. Um, it's also, it's expensive um, and 
it also demands not just budget in terms of hardware, it demands budget in terms of running it. Sophisticated management engine management systems mean that you need to have ex very great experts, experts who are paid, in many instances, far more than the riders, who are actually operating and optimizing the potential of these complex management systems. These people are hard to find as well. So you've got a situation with, with, uh, with freedom of engine management systems where it's expensive. You've also got a situation in which that cost, unlike some trick forks on the bike or wheels, cannot be seen by the spectator. They've no idea whether the, whether the bike has got no electronics on it or whether it's got something very trick. On the other hand, from the entertainment point of view, Inevitably, electronics try to um, subsidize, they, they try to displace to an extent the, vari the, the, the variation in rider performance. Things like um, traction control are clearly designed there to enable, the ele to, to enable electronics to do a better job than the average rider in controlling throttle application. That's not what racing, true racing should, um, should be about. That's not what the fans out there want to see. They want to see the best riders who are better at modulating power be it wet or dry, doing the job and getting the rewards for doing so. So the regulations for BSB next year across the board will be a spec ECU, a spec MoTeC ECU, and there will be no gizmos allowed on that. There will be no, there'll be no anti-wheelie, so um, it'll be back to throttle control to prevent wheelies. Um, there'll be no, um, there'll be no traction control, and what are the other, the other? No launch control as well. So we're going to come back to um, a much, a much uh, less complicated ECU, a very reliable ECU. It's been proven in Evo class this year. Um, it's very reliable. It's totally consistent. Um, but we're going to see more emphasis back on rider performance, rider contribution, than on electronic uh, contribution to the process. Rev limits another key aspect of how this works, and the rev limit is going to be the, the standard bike's maximum rev limit as can be achieved on a dyno. If you take a fire blade and put it on a dyno and rev the nuts off it, when it hits the limiter, whatever it hits the limiter at, that is the rev limit, and we found from testing a lot of bikes that that is, as you might expect, totally consistent from one bike of the same brand um, to, to another, plus 750. Evo has run with a, with a, with a limit of 500 um, over maximum. And so whatever the bike's maximum rev limit is, that plus 750 revs. So that essentially um, is what we're doing for the regu technical regulations um, next year. As I said, with regard to the transmission, another thing is that there will be one set of gear ratios for the year. Previously it's been two, I believe, but now it's just going to be one. Clearly, effectively, the final drive, the, the, the um, the, the final drive ratio through the sprocket could be varied as ever, but the stepping of the ratios will be determined and there'll be one set of that. So none of that is going to make any difference, any negative difference to the, to the, the, the appeal of the bikes on the track. It's going to make it more spectacular. It's going to drive down costs substantially. It's going to enable teams that have not been in, in BSB at the front for some time with already bought and have World Superbike technology and systems and management systems. It's, it's going to enable new teams to come in and be competitive um, pretty much straight away. And I have to say that these regulations have been really, we're now announcing them, um, but they have been evolved and, and determined over a long period of consultation. I think many of you will know that. And I come back to the first point I made, and that is that our role, uh, Stuart Higgs and me, is, is really saying to have the ideas, to see which direction overall we want to go, and that is lower cost, more parity, higher entertainment, um, and then consult with all those people who are involved. And we had probably three or four big meetings with, with the teams, um, present that we have two major um, guideline groups. We have the, the TLG, the Teams Liaison Group, and the MLG, the Manufacturers Liaison Group, and both have been heavily consulted on this. And we have got true consensus um, from everybody on these regulations. Some people would like to see um, uh, engine management systems as they are, but overall they can, that, but that's a minority. Everyone overall, there are, there are different factions who will inevitably favor a particular thing, and quite right too. If you're running a team and you've got an advantage, you want to try and defend that particular advantage you've got. But overall, everybody can see the benefit of what we're doing. Um, and I think it's a very exciting time, very exciting time for British Superbikes. I think we're going to be seeing even more teams. We've had a great year between Evo and the main class. We've had 30, up to 38 bikes. We're going to see even more appetite, I think. And uh, one of the other great things that's, uh, I think, important 
is that by driving down the cost of actually putting the bikes onto the track, driving down lots of money going on electronics, for example, and, uh, and, and tuning that costs a huge amount for a very little horsepower gain, we're going to give the opportunity for teams to spend more budget, if they can find it, on the riders. And I think it's time that the riders had, there's more focus on them, and the way that uh, motor racing should be uh, is that if you can get the cost down, the teams will spend the money on the things that make the difference. And the things that will make the difference um, will be more on the riders now, and I think we're going to see, uh, we're going to see BSB even more a, a destination for some great international riders. We've seen more and more influx on that. It's great to have John Hopkins, um, of course, coming back. And uh, he, he showed last weekend, I think we'd all agree, just how competitive BSB is, when he's certainly not walked off with everything. He's been right at the sharp end, but he put it on pole straight away at the World Superbike round at uh, Silverstone. You know, we've got a great championship here, and Stuart and I are extremely ambitious for it. We already believe it's the best Superbike championship in the world. Um, we think we, we are determined that it, that position should be reinforced and underlined and, and even even less disputed. Um, in motor racing, you've got things like um, DTM, the German Touring Car Championship, which is probably the most what well, is the most successful touring car championship. Effectively, a very well-run domestic championship. NASCAR in car racing falls under the same umbrella. You've got effectively American saloon car racing, but it's absolutely huge. The great advantage we have in the UK is that we have. 10 great circuits in a relatively small amount of area um, which enables the cost of participation to, for teams to run at different locations. They don't have to be around the world. Teams can run at different locations, different venues around the UK to put on a different show for the TV audience, for the fan, um, with costs far less than, than, than taking part in a world championship where you've got to haul equipment across not just countries but continents. And moreover, we are really fortunate in the UK to have a fantastic fan base who love the sport, and I'm very sure that the numbers of spectators across probably the whole season that British Superbikes has um, is, is probably greater, and many events are greater than events even of a World Superbike status, and you, can, you would have seen that for yourself. So, you know, we've got something very precious with BSB, we're trying to manage it carefully um, and evolve it, and we're very, very excited about the prospects for 2012, so much so that we're introducing, we're planning to introduce um, another significant change for BSB next year. Really taking into account the fact that uh, we, we're sure there's going to be a big appetite for it because of the lower cost of participation. Um, and, um, and also that we want to reward those teams that have been supporting BSB for a long time. It's never easy to get the budgets. Teams are always scratching away, but there are many teams who are there year on, year in, year out, because they're racers, they want to be there. They've built up their teams, and now we want to have um, a new regulation that, that we will maintain that gives true value to those teams. And that is that there will be a maximum of 32 bikes on the grid for the future. There will be a, deter there will be a finite number of teams, if you want, and we will be inviting applications for initially two bike teams we hope there will be enough six there will be 16 two bike teams alternatively if for example there are 14 two bike teams that apply for the places um, and a load of uh, single bike teams well we'll take the single bikes to come up to 32 but we want we will then limit um, British super bikes to those 32 bikes preferably with 16 two bike teams and in the future if people want to come in into it if teams want to graduate into BSB they'll need to do a deal they need to buy one of the one of the team's entries um, who are already in it so there is going to be no price for the the initial there's no fee to become part of uh, one of the initial elites the British superbike elites those 16 bikes those 16 teams rather we will be inviting applications we'll be looking at them I'm sure it'll be pretty obvious I'm sure most people here too would agree and once we've got that those teams then can grow and um, if they're not doing a good job of course they'll if they're not if they don't uh, continue to enter their two bikes they'll lose their entitlement to automatic entry for the following year and they're always free to trade that entry to anybody who wants to come into it so that'll make the elite and then even more of an elite but it'll also mean that teams that want to come into BSB can if they can't get into BSB they could do super sport they could do super sport they can graduate they can they can earn their spurs or they get to a level of quality and resources they can then come up to be one of these 32. It helps us logistically too because knowing how many teams and bikes are going to be it helps the garage planning, it helps the program planning, sponsorship uh, control as well. So all around I think it's going to be a very exciting time for British Superbikes. That I think is Adam and Stuart's got anything to add to that.
Um, I've, uh, it's, it's all from memory, so if I've missed a few things out, I've been living with this and getting excited about it um, for many months now, and Stuart and I talking weekly about the evolutions on it and who thinks what and how it's all panning out. Um, but uh, I, think it's, I think it's a really exciting time for BSP, um, and despite the fact the economic climate is it's tough, um, uh, I really believe that we're going we're gonna to go from strength to strength. It's going to be the biggest year yet next year, I think, with these regulations. And I think the timing is absolutely right. And uh, again, I think it's very helpful that uh, the approach we've got of a nimble, um, progressive organization that are not, are not, we're not trying to making changes. You know, if we think of an idea, well, whatever it's been, the single tire, the, the showdown concept, we think about it carefully, we consult extensively, we come to a conclusion, and we do it. And that's what's happened this year. Any questions from anybody? Well, I knew I talked a lot. I didn't think I covered everything, but... <laughs> Any questions, guys? Very shy audience, Jonathan. All right. Well, look. Um, I hope you all think. I hope you all share the excitement that we do. I think uh, we've had a great race here today. I'm sure we've got a couple more tomorrow, and uh, we look forward to having seeing how it all pans out. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Jonathan Palmer and Stuart Higgs.